Hello, welcome to Adapt Inklets, the place of knowledge pack and commonly tested content in your Inklets. Um, I'll be talking about will be anti-pattern hemorrhage. In the these three things you see on the screen: accreta, abruption, previa, and then just a bonus of uh, urine rapture. Uh, some of the hemorrhage that. Sometimes they put it in a question to confuse you. Um, the best way to remember them is what I'm going to give it to you. The specific buzzwords that you should pay attention to when you see that in the question. Um, focus on the buzzwords. The treatment may be the same because of hemorrhage, um, which is the underlying uh, treatment you want to ensure. But you, will, you, you want to be able to identify specific buzzwords in the answer choice or the question that has been given unto you so that you can distinguish between this very key um, antipartin hemorrhage. So what is antipartin hemorrhage? Basically, it's just hemorrhage that occur after 24 weeks. Um, so you have 24 weeks of um, hemorrhage, so usually 24 weeks postpartum, you know, no, antipartum, hemorrhage, okay, 24 weeks to just before the birth. So those are uh, what we call antipartal hemorrhage. They're very important. And one of the key one is uh, placenta um, accreta. So the, let me show you something. So this is the placenta, okay? If this is the placenta, um, usually, you have the endometrium of the uterus. It's like that, he has layers. And this is the muscle layer. This is what we call the endometrium. No, the, the myometrium. So this is the myometrium, that's the muscle, myometrium. The inside lining is the endo. So this is the endometrium. And this is the serosa outside. So they used, this is the uterus. Um, the wall of the uterus. The placenta, usually, it doesn't completely embedded into the muscle. Usually, this is the normal placenta. It come here, and then it goes here like that. With the vessels coming, uh, you have the vessels that supply it. So this is normal placenta. Normal placenta. In accreta, you have this placenta basically make its, its way into the wall of the um, the uterus, basically, and the vessel coming. So the vessel basically penetrated into the wall, so they embedded. So this is PA, placenta accreta. And therefore, it's a very serious problem. Um, it's a very serious problem. Um, it can cause a lot of problem. Um, especially during birth. Because of this, um, these patients need to be, um, they will undergo C-section, uh, but just a C-section, they have to be done in places where they specialize, so specialized hospital. You got to do this in a specialized hospital, basically, to be able to do that. What do you think it will be the major complication based on this structure? If you pull in the placenta where there will be hemorrhage, so very, they have hemorrhage. And this can be life-threatening. So life-threatening um, hemorrhage um, due to the placenta accreta. So that's the main thing. The definition, placenta being embedded into the wall of the uterus and during birth, um, they will have life-threatening hemorrhage. So they have to undergo C-section um, to, to deliver the baby. Because it's so embedded in the uterus, sometimes they cannot just separate the placenta from the uterus. And therefore, what will happen? They undergo hysterectomy. So this is really bad. You have to remove the woman, the whole uterus out, which can be, it's no fun uh, for the woman. It, it's usually unplanned. For all these four things, we're going to talk about the treatment, especially for the next generation questions. You have to know these things, how to manage, not just the diagnosis, but what would the doctor do? What is the management? What do you expect as a nurse? Well, if I'm going to have a patient who is going to bleed, then I have to anticipate all the things, have everything ready 
so that when the patient is bleeding, I can provide care. So these people have two large bowl IV. Um, when we say large bowl IV, people get confused. What does that mean? Not just 23, 24, no, 16 to 18 gauge needle. They need 16 to 18 gauge needle. You need to type and cross them, cross match them, okay? So that you have blood available. Um, and, and they need to be resuscitated, okay? Um, and then everybody be aware, anesthesia, everybody is aware that this is what is going on, that when they're delivering, the mother um, will get enough uh, resuscitation team to be available. Patients should be aware of the condition and then so that if they wake up and the uterus is gone, they are aware. But the key thing is to know what it is, is accretal and how to manage it. So that is that one. The next one is different. It's the same thing. So I will draw the same thing. So this is the uterus. So let's see if this is the uterus. This is the cervix here. So this is the uterus wall. Okay. And the cervix is here. This then you go into the vagina. So this is the vagina. And for a previa, usually the, the, the placenta doesn't want to, it usually will implant here like that. This is where the placenta will be. But for previa, it can and cover the cervical horse. So this is this is the previa. It cover the, the cervical horse, basically cervical orifice, basically, that's how they write it, if you see that. So the baby, when they're trying to come in, as they try to contract, it push on the placenta. So you have something we call placenta insufficiency, you know, placenta insufficiency. When the baby is contracting, his head is pushing on the placenta. So less blood flow hypoxia um, for the baby. So it's very not good. It's not good for the baby. It's impede blood flow, and that become a problem. And so you can see this when you get an ultrasound, okay? Um, you can see this on the ultrasound drawing, and you can see the location of the, uh, the, the placenta, and it become a problem. The same thing as we've talked about, when the baby is getting to get born, there's a risk of hemorrhage, okay? There's a risk of hemorrhage. So you need to um, let the mother know about this issue, this hemorrhage problem. If somebody come in with the placenta preview and they find out it's not the end of the world, okay? The, the idea is the placenta will move away if it's not a crater. If it has not completely embedded, then it will move away easily so you can check um, the, the ultrasound again before delivery. If the patient is stable, okay, stable patient, when they find out probably 30 weeks or 28 weeks and there's no bleeding, nothing like that, they can be go home, they can discharge, they can discharge home and they can take care of themselves until they're ready um, for, for delivery, okay? They, until they're ready for delivery. Because of where the placenta is, you have to, like I said, repeat ultrasound. Repeat ultrasound at 36 weeks. You want to repeat it 36 weeks or before onset of uh, labor, before onset of labor. Because if labor start, they're already compressing the placenta, the kid will be in problem. So you let them come in before 30 weeks, uh, right at 36 weeks and check it or before you 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 know they're going to be in labor so that you can find out where the placenta location is, um, and then you can treat them as much as possible. Um, they may need C-section to because of the way it's located, so may need C-section. Don't forget about all these things. May need C-section um, in order for the kid to survive in case there's a issue with 
placenta uh, insufficiency. Okay, because of the risk of bleeding, I forget to mention, um, or as I've already mentioned, all of them, you get 16 to 18 gauge needle. Okay, uh, they have to type and cross them. The same story, you have to know for the next generation, they may give you a chart, you have to tell them what, or what are all the things you have to do. Of course, fiddle monitoring, okay? Um, he, he... And of course, um, you gotta check their pads because they may be bleeding. So these, are, these patients need to be monitored carefully, yeah, as much as possible. Um, and if you have to discharge them, this one, if they're going home, if they're stable and they're going home there and you discharge home, there's things you tell them, okay? There's no, they have to have a pelvic rest. This is a fancy way we say that pelvic rest means no sex. It's a fancy way of saying it. And then um, for this one, if they're bleeding and you have to do something about it, well, you got to check their RH status. Um, that's very key. Uh, you want to know RH um, positivity or negativity is very important. So this is the management of um, placenta um, previa. And before we I finish with that, something came to my mind, maybe probably I forgot. All of these things, especially the previa, no vaginal exams, especially for previa, because of where the, the placenta, if you put your hand in, you're poking the, uh, the placenta. So it's a problem. No vaginal exams for um, placenta previa. That's why you should have a pelvic rest because the placenta is right there. Any trauma over there will become a problem. And so you should let the mother know that. This is the management. Um, how would they present? Very, very important in terms of what you're going to see. Um, so there's a classic way of um, finding out if this is a placenta uh, previa. So this is classically is painless bleeding. It's usually bright red blood, painless. They have no pain, they're bleeding. Um, you, have, you know the history and abdominal pain, painless bleeding. You may have to have an ultrasound to find out. You have to know something that they have the history of placenta preview um, and the risk of hemorrhage in terms of in dish, uh, during delivery. If they're stable, you keep them in the hospital um, because they will be bleeding. Uh, you keep them in the hospital before until they're stable, then you send them home. If they go home, you got to bring them back 36 weeks or before onset of labor. And as you go to the labor, you got to prepare them for surgery. And so that's what you do. These are the key things you need to know about this specific um, problem. And his friend is, the other way is placenta abruption. Basically, the placenta basically separates. Something causes the placenta to separate from the wall of the from the endometrium. Okay, it just separate away, and it's a acute onset, acute onset of painful, you know, painful bleeding. This bleeding is really dark compared to the previous, which is bright red, painless bleeding. It's also sudden, uh, but this one is painful. Um, dark blood and it's due to the separation of that. There is risk factors. Okay, risk factors. You can think anything that will cause ischemia. So I use the word ischemia causes the plants less blood flow to the placenta can cause it to abrupt. And you can think about it. Um, the, the if your blood pressure is high, this is why hypertension. Like you having stroke, 
The other way you think about it is stroke of the placenta. That's sometimes you got to make this connection. And even though it's not the same in your head, something that will make you understand the pathophysiology world. It's just ischemia to the placenta. So it becomes necrotic and it pull away from the wall. Uh, so that's it separate abruptly. There's some not due to that. So I, when your blood pressure is very high, it will create an ischemia. Number one thing that causes ischemia is um, this medication, cocaine. Okay, cocaine is really notoriously insane, causing ischemia. So people who use cocaine, they can have ischemia of their gut. So you can have the ischemia of their heart. So they can have heart attack. They can have of the bowel, um, in the placenta. They can, they can have... Those are the areas they can do that. So they can have mesenteric, what we call ischemia. The bowel start dying because it is it, a strong vasoconstrictor. They can have a heart attack. So if they give you a question, anytime they give you a question, they put cocaine there. Think about tissue is going to die. Ischemia of the heart. They will have a heart attack. They will have ischemia of their bowel and of their extremities. So these patients become a priority patient. They are ischemia. Uh, tissue is dying, necrosis, okay? And that will lead to sepsis. You don't want that. And so these people, the risk factors is that, like um, these are one of the features or if they have a premature um, rapture of memory, okay? Pre, pre, premature um, rapture memory. Um, um, premature rapture memory can do that and that can create ischemia for that. So after they present with that, Acute onset, sometimes on exams, they'll give you specific physical exams. So they, they have sudden onset, acute onset, painful, um, dark bleeding. The abdomen is very going to be rigid. So rigid abdomen or uterus. It's very, very painful. And the baby, since he's becoming ischemic, then you see on the federal monitoring, you see some changes. You see some B cells. They will do same side like distress, you know, abnormal, um, the, the fetal heart, heart pattern, okay, heart rhythm. Basically, you see that it's not normal, um, and the mommy will be in trouble. So those are the, some of the things you see. The treatment, as you can see, is management of the mother. You have to like resuscitate. It's all bleeding, so. Type and cross, IV, transfuse as much as possible. And this lady may need a C section. It's just like it's unattainable. Um, so they may need C section. It depends on how bad is the separation. The baby needs to be um, taken care of. So if the separation is really bad, the emergency section has to be taken. But if you see this, you see dark bleeding, sudden onset, um, painful. You got to call the ACP as soon as possible. After you get all the stuff that you needed, get it ready, um, IV and everything, and get them ready for um, to be taken care of. So it's a bleeding priority, abruption. And finally, the urine rupture, the way to see it is, if this is the uterus, okay, this is normal uterus, and the baby is inside like that. This is rapture, it's open, and you see the baby in the uterus. So this is open through the uterus. It's not good, it's not fun, um, it's bad. That's like, so this, the scenario is mommy is contracting, Mommy is contracting all of a sudden. And so this happens, sudden onset. All of a sudden, you see a vaginal bleeding, painful one. You see painful vaginal bleeding. But this is what is going to happen. Um, the pain doesn't go away. It's constant. It's constant pain. That doesn't go away. The kid 
will lose its station. Um, that means um, if the kid is in, depending on the station, they if they hear a, a five year or a plus five year or the minus three year, before he realized it's going up, he has lost his station. The kid loss of station. That's bad. They have lost their station completely. That's a key thing you have to know. Fetal loss of station and then uh, fetal distress. Okay, they will have the distress. So what is the treatment? The treatment is C-section. Right away, we're going to the surgery OR, which is surgery, and deliver the baby. It's unattainable. The uterus has ruptured. It's... So those are the things they need to go to the OR for surgery. Let me recap. The, the normal one key feature for uterine rupture is like lost, loss of fetal station and abnormal fetal heart pattern. That, those are the key. When you see that, there's a loss of all of the sudden, and then the last third one, sudden, okay, sudden cessation of contraction. Mommy is contracting, 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 all of a sudden, boom. No more contraction. The fetal, the fetus has lost its station and there's abdominal fetal heart pattern. That is your clue that the mother has ruptured. If they have sudden onset of uh, dark blood, painful in nature, then you know um, it's a placenta abruption. Um, there is no going to be a loss of station. There's no loss of cessation of contraction. But the key things for abruption, the abdomen will be very rigid, very, very rigid. And then um, the, the, the fetus may also have a heart pattern that is abnormal, but there is no loss of station or cessation of contraction. There is still contraction despite the abruption. The acrypto is usually bleeding. Um, in the day two can be painless in nature. The acrypto and the Previa are all painless bleeding. And the abruption and urine rupture are painful bleeding. And so the two are different. Um, they, that's how you can distinguish between them. The, those accreta and previa, you need an ultrasound to be able to see exactly what is going on. Abruption and then uh, rupture, you don't need an ultrasound. It's emergency, acute onset, painful thing that needs to be taken care of. So this is how you can distinguish these four things that they can ask you. It's just some key words, buzzwords you have to pay attention to to be able to distinguish between these um, antipotent uh, bleeding. Um, thank you for listening and good luck in your, uh, in your exams. Um, keep charging and then check my uh, YouTube and Facebook and subscribe, especially on YouTube. And then see you later.